Good evening. Welcome to the 2022-2023 Town of Stratford draft budget presentation. Uh, we'll be presenting uh, the town, we'll be presenting our draft budget for public input, uh, and we'll be uh, provided a, a, a lot of uh, great information uh, by our chair of finance, Councillor Gail McDonald, who's done amazing, a great job on uh, preparing this budget and uh, we look forward to it. But at this time, I'd like to acknowledge that the land upon which we gather is a traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq and we pay our respects to the indigenous Mi'kmaq people of this territory, past, present and future. So I think this year has been a, a, a really great year in a lot of ways for the town. Uh, we've made a lot of great achievements and uh, uh, we've, uh, we've worked long and hard at, uh, at this budget uh, to get it uh, uh, to the point where um, we feel that uh, it presents a, a great path into the future and it, it provides uh, uh, really a, a good basis for uh, uh, moving forward some of our major initiatives. Uh, and uh, so, Thank you all for attending. I really look forward to any questions or any comments or anything at all that you'd like to say uh, about this budget. Uh, really value your input. So, so please uh, uh, take a good look and, and really. Uh, Wendy? I think we may have lost the mayor there. He appears to be frozen on my end as well, Gail. So we'll okay. let you go ahead, Councillor McDonald. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Your Worship, for those uh, stunning remarks. Uh, good evening and welcome to those joining us online, viewing the recording or reading this presentation on their own. Our format this evening will be a presentation of this draft budget in its entirety and when I'm finished, there will be ample time to make observations, ask questions, or to criticize or praise any aspect of it. I encourage you to do so. After all, this is your budget, your tax dollars at work. And we want to know that what we are doing is what you would like us to do. Mayor Steve Ogden, my fellow council members, and some of our town staff are also on this call with me, observing and listening. This is your time to be heard. As well, following tonight, you will have another week uh, to let your thoughts be heard via the online survey. Please take a few minutes to respond to the draft budget survey, which will help guide us as we move forward with passing the budget later on this month. The survey, recording of tonight's presentation, and copy of my presentation will all be available on the town's website tomorrow morning. While we can't accommodate all requests, we can certainly listen. If a received request is not possible this year, it may be something we are able to entertain next year. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And now on to our draft budget presentation. The 22-23 draft budget presented to you this evening has been worked on with our growing community in mind. Our needs are changing, expanding, and by times putting a strain on our finances. But delivering the services and programming you expect and deserve remains top of mind for your Town of Stratford Council and staff. Today I am pleased to let you know that we are doing so in the upcoming year with no tax increases to residents or businesses. At this time last year, we were optimistic that the pandemic would be behind us. As we have moved through the past 12 months and in total 24 months of pandemic life, we have been challenged by it but in many ways, it has also brought us together. We have continued to bring you live council meeting broadcasts and public meetings over virtual platforms, allowing for even further reach, participation and accessibility to our meetings. We have seen an increase in awareness and use of our trails and parks with many residents spending time outdoors, getting themselves moving and enjoying the fresh air. We continue to feel good at home that we are able to help you thrive in a community you are proud to call home. As Stratford continues to be in a period of growth, 
This, on the surface, appears to many to be financially positive for our community. And in the long run, it will be. However, growth in fact stretches our finances and budgets over the short term. There are many demands placed on our services, infrastructure, programming, and more, which remains both a challenge and an opportunity. Future growth of our community is positive in the long run and good news overall for Stratford, but it doesn't directly relate to increased revenue for the town as services, including water and sewer infrastructure, trails and sidewalks, increased recreation and cultural programming, and fire protection, among others, are required in order for the growth to occur and comes at an expense that is not equal to our growth revenue. As you have heard us speak about before, another way in which we have been financially challenged is with the change to the revenue sharing model by the province of PEI, which continues to greatly affect the amount of revenue we have to work with each year. We are currently working alongside our fellow island municipalities to negotiate a new revenue sharing agreement with the current government and are hopeful that a fresh approach can be found, providing a long-term funding model that is predictable, stable, and fair. Overall, Stratford remains in a good place financially. We have a history of being fiscally responsible, for, of planning for the future, and for our accountability and transparency. We do not overspend. We take a measured approach when looking at our expenditures, ensuring that our project planning not only reflects construction or implementation costs, but also cost projection, projections rather over the life cycle, including operating and maintenance replacement planning. And we continue to do so within this budget. As previously mentioned, change dating back to 2008 by the provincial government at the time continues to greatly affect the amount of dollars the town of Stratford receives. In this upcoming budget year, the town will have $632,000 less revenue to work with due to this change. This has a significant impact on our ability to provide the same level and number of services to you as residents. However, this change did not remove or change of the responsibility on municipalities to deliver these services to you. Municipalities on PEI have very few revenue sources available to them and rely primarily on property taxes, utility charges, and fees to pay for services and infrastructure. With limited options available, negative changes to funding arrangements like this greatly affect our bottom line. Unlike municipalities, the province of PEI has many forms of revenue generation, including income tax, sales tax, property tax, corporate tax, property transfer tax, gas tax, liquor, tobacco and cannabis taxes, licensing fees and permits. Many residents are unaware of how their property taxes are divided between the town and the province. With only 41% of the revenue coming to the town, and the remaining 59% to the province. Much of the revenue received by the town of Stratford from your property tax goes towards services that the town has little discretion over, except in some cases, setting the service level you receive. These include items like police and fire protection, transit, street lighting, and all modes of active transportation. A significant expense seen in our budget annually are fire dues. The town of Stratford pays for our portion of the fire dues from within the property taxes collected from residents and commercial property owners. They have seen significant increases since 2018, going from 153 per commercial unit to 654.68 per commercial unit in the upcoming year and from 66 for residential properties to $115.15 per residential property. The town of Stratford and our surrounding fire district we are part of are grateful to the volunteers of the Crossroads Fire Department. The work undertaken by these selfless individuals goes far beyond fighting fires, it includes first responder activities for medical distress calls, vehicle accidents, etc. on top of a regular training regime to be ready when they are needed. The increase this year will help fund the purchase of a new truck 
and assist with anticipated increased expenditures on many required items due to the high consumer price index and the effect it is having on overall pricing. The Crossroads Fire Department have also been significantly impacted by COVID-19 with their need to purchase protection and related health and safety supplies needed for the safe operation of the fire department. The rising consumer price index is having an effect on many of the Town of Stratford budget estimates. During the 22-23 process, council and staff have been mindful in allowing for increases to account for what is expected to be higher than normal seen increases for the upcoming year. This affects all operational expenses, including staff resources. Two major projects underway in Stratford in the 22-23 budget are the Stratford Community Campus and the Michael Thomas Waterfront Park. Last year, the town of Stratford took a major step forward with the purchase of the community campus lands. This property will become a focal point of our community in the future and include the previously announced high school by the province of PEI, along with a variety of recreational and cultural spaces. Master plan has been completed, which includes a site plan with elements and amenities laid out in accordance with their relationship to each other and shows where the roads, water services, sewer services, electrical and communication services, stormwater infrastructure, and active transportation infrastructure will be located following the natural topography to the extent possible. Funding in the upcoming budget year will have us ready to move to the design and construction of the site, including roads, trails, water and sewer, a solar array, and electrical distribution should our funding applications be approved. In time, the community campus will provide Stratford residents with a recreational, cultural, and social hub that will have physical, social, and mental health benefits. With regard to the Michael Thomas Waterfront Park, the upcoming year will be an exciting one for the town of Stratford as we look forward to the anticipated completion of the first phase of the new park on our waterfront. Along with seeing the grass growing this spring, our work plan includes the installation of a boardwalk to allow residents to begin to access this space. Expenses in the general government section of the budget include police, fire, transit, council and community expenses, streetlights, animal control, and the CAO office expenses. This past year saw the launch of the Switch Stratford program, which has been very well received by residents to date. The program continues to provide residential energy retrofit loans to help residents reduce energy costs and greenhouse gas emissions. Investments that we are making in the general government area this year are implementation of additional supports for the local business community following feedback received through the first year of an annual business survey. Additional year of the popular residential tree planting program. A town operational review. Continued implementation of the community energy plan and core area development and potential zoning changes, which will see our community transform over the coming years. Discussions are beginning between the Town of Stratford and Public Safety Canada to plan for the payment of retroactive back pay owed for contract negotiations with the RCMP under a newly signed national collective agreement. Under this new agreement, RCMP wages have increased and this will have an ongoing impact on our budget. In the Finance and Technology Department budget, largest expense outside of staff expenses is the interest payment on town debt. In 2022-23, in this draft budget, we will continue to pay down towards our debt with an interest payment of 280,000 and a principal payment of 858,000, which equates to 11% of our budget. A new initiative plan for the current year is to fund a full-time information technology position. As the town grows, so too does our range of technology needs and services. This IT position will support all of the technology services and components operate in our town-owned buildings and for the Stratford utility. 
The position will be a significant help to ensuring that cyber attacks and th threats to technology are prepared for in advance and avoided to the extent possible. Having an in-house dedicated staff person will be an investment that will pay off in ways we may never even realize. Another substantial expense under the Finance and Technology Department is in technology. This includes all of the licensing fees for town software, technology security needs, and other computer and technology expenses. During these past couple of years during the pandemic, we have realized how fortunate we were with past technology investments made as we were in a position to easily move to an environment of working remotely and communicating virtually. We moved to these platforms quickly and were able to continue to provide the services residents expected with minimal delays and interruptions. Under recreational culture and events, the town of Stratford continued to invest in our community's physical, social, cultural, and mental well being in the past year. Recreation and art programs continued to evolve and adapt to changing restrictions, but were able to proceed and operated at or near capacity in most instances. Our staff at the Stratford Youth Center also have been able to ensure a safe space for our youth to gather, which we know is so important to their mental well-being. This past year continued to be another year with increased users seen at our parks and on our trails as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Many of our spaces see year-round visitors as a result of winter trail grooming on some of our trails and the operation of three outdoor rinks in the town. The 22-23 budget sees an additional staff person budgeted to help in these areas for further fall, winter and spring maintenance and expended services. We have great optimism that events such as Canada Day, Fall Fest and Christmas in the Park will return to more normal celebrations this year. Planning is underway for some of these events already and we are confident that residents will be ready to celebrate alongside town council and staff. The Town of Stratford Council voted earlier this year to financially support the upcoming 2023 Canada Winter Games on PEI. After lengthy debate, it was decided that these games only come to PEI occasionally and given our small size, will truly be a province-wide games. Town staff have negotiated with the organizing committee of the 2023 Canada Winter Games and the town of Stratford will be able to recoup investment through the acquisition of goods following the games, which can be utilized in the town or resold. We are looking forward to the games next winter and encourage residents to volunteer and get ready to cheer on young athletes from across Canada when they come to PEI. The highlights from the Recreational Culture and Events Department to watch for in this upcoming budget include continued investment in our green spaces through the addition of natural areas and tree planting, continued investment in active transportation networks, continued investment in the arts with an increase in funding for public art, introduction of a new bursary for Stratford artists, the Stratford Youth Center introduction of the Cheryl Duffy bursary to provide financial support annually to a youth member pursuing post-secondary education, power connection to be installed at the Stratford Community Gardens, a full-scale return to in-person events and activities, and a fourth outdoor rink as per residents' requests. The department is currently responsible for more than 35 parks and green spaces, 365 acres of passive and urban parkland, 35 kilometers of trails, and more than 15 horticultural beds. Stratford parks are comprised of a host of amenities, which include playground structures, lighted and unlighted ball diamonds, soccer fields, multi-use fields and courts, parking lots, and trails. Under the infrastructure department, this past year saw the opening of the active transportation path along the Kepic Road, from Kinlock Road to the Eastern Town Boundary. This project has been well received by residents and is used daily by many. As well, the active transportation connection across the Hillsborough Bridge was completed by the province of PEI 
and has been a tremendous improvement for our residents actively commuting across into Charlottetown and back, as well as for residents of Charlottetown to do the same. With the further enhancements this year to our waterfront, this usage will likely increase even more. Additional electric charging stations were installed in 2021, providing for more options for residents and visitors to access them at Stratford Town Center and at the Stratford Emergency Services Center, along with the existing charger on Shepherd Drive. The Town of Stratford continues to value a number of successful existing partnerships with private landowners in the town who have given permission to the town to extend connections to our active transportation network across their private properties. We continually look at further expansion of these partnerships where possible. Additionally, within the 22-23 budget are the following highlights. Onside watershed restoration. Work will begin with the dredging of Moores and Kelly's ponds and rehabilitation of the wetland and buffer zones surrounding these ponds. Planned active transportation investments, pending funding, including a paved multi-use trail to be constructed on Kinlock Road between the Trans-Canada and JK Beauty Lane. This will enhance the connectivity to the existing and soon to be constructed expanded network by the province of PEI. Replacing a section of sidewalk along Kepic Road between Woodland Drive and Pondside Park. Funding is currently being explored to assist with the installment of solar panels on the Stratford Emergency Services Center. Purchase of a new electric vehicle to be added to the town's fleet. Delivery of custodial services by town staff rather than as a private contract. The town of Stratford is also pleased to see the province of PEI installing a new roundabout on the Trans-Canada Highway, connect McKinnon Drive. Along with this work, lighting will be installed along the remainder of the highway a permanent divider between east and westbound traffic put in place, and an active transportation connection from Kinlock Road to Stratford Road. We are appreciative of this work in our community and our ongoing relationship with the province of PEI on various projects. The Town of Stratford's Planning, Development and Heritage Department had another very busy year in 2021 with a construction value of 48.8 million in our community. 2021 also saw 207 permits issued, requiring approximately 430 inspections completed by town staff. As a result of the increasing number of permits being applied for and resulting inspections generated, the 22-23 budget includes the addition of a 36-week position. As the Town of Stratford's Planning Department continues to be increasingly busy, an increase to the consultant's fees for this department is also included in this year to allow for assistance on specific projects. The Town's Heritage Subcommittee completed a project at the Town Cenotaph with funding through Veterans Affairs Canada, the Commemorative Partnership Program, Community War Memorial Funding. This project saw 10 outlines of boots line the walkway leading to the Cenotaph of 10 soldiers from Stratford who made the ultimate sacrifice and did not return from overseas conflicts or died at home. The project also made the existing cenotaph fully accessible to the installation of a walkway. In 2021, the Heritage Subcommittee also partnered with the Arts and Cultural and Diversity and Inclusion Subcommittees, and they installed six Mi'kmaq traditional place name signs within the Stratford area with the help of the province of PEI. The Stratford Utility Corporation operates on a cash recovery basis. We continue to analyze expenses to ensure that the rates are equitable among our customers and sufficient to meet our long-term needs. We are pleased to deliver this draft budget with no increases to either the water or sewer rates in 22-23. The past year saw the lagoons decommissioned and filled in with grass uh, it's going to, the grass is going to be seen on site this spring. This project is exciting for the town and will allow us park space on our waterfront. Additional highlights from the Stratford utility budget include additional water reservoir tower to supply domestic and fire protection for our growing community, 
upgrades to the Kourish sewage pump station and force main with the ultimate goal to redirect the Kourish station flows away from the Pondside station and into the gravity trunk main instead. Pending funding, the completion of upgrades to the Bunbury sewage pumping station to accommodate the current and future growth in that area. The 22-23 budget year will also see the utility continuing to implement the inflow and infiltration reduction program as a means to minimize the amount of water entering the sewer system that does not require treatment. Given that we are now pumping our sewage to Charlottetown, this work is even more important to complete and will reduce the amount of surface and groundwater seeping into the sewer system. The utility continues to monitor and review the sewer system to identify areas that require attention and repairs. In 21, we have been able to rehabilitate 210 meters of sewer by using innovative technology where the existing pipe was lined through manhole access with no excavation required. Residents continue to embrace our water conservation programs, including monitoring their water meter usage and taking advantage of the free water audit program, which continues in 22-23. In summary, residents of Stratford should be proud of the work undertaken through this budget. With no tax increases, we have still managed to expand some services and deliver necessary investments and improvements. Your town of Stratford mayor, council and staff continue to work hard on your behalf every day. Through the past two years, they have been full of challenges. They have been provided opportunities for us to better serve and include residents in our community. We continue to hear from residents regularly through engagement on specific topic areas and more broadly through our annual resident survey and our new annual business survey. Over the next week, we ask residents to take time to review this draft budget and use the brief online survey that we have developed to let us know how it reflects and meets your priorities for the upcoming year. We commit to continuing to ensure that we are watching our spending closely and managing our expenses while allowing for expanded services and programs as required in the areas we most need that have the most impact or where residents are requesting them. We continue to listen to you. There is a tremendous amount of optimism in the air around Stratford with lots of exciting, positive changes coming to our town. We hope that along with us, you will continue to be proud to live here. We eagerly look forward to seeing residents and persons at events later this year, and would also like to remind residents that municipal elections will be coming up this fall and we encourage you to get involved and get out to vote at that time. Let us continue to work together for the betterment of our community. This concludes my presentation. Now open the floor to comments and questions. Please feel free to mute yourself to ask your question or use the chat function and type in your question, which will be read out loud. Thank you everyone for your attention. And my great assistant, Wendy, is going to keep an eye on the uh, chat line and make sure any questions get directed our way. And uh, if I can't uh, respond or would like someone else to jump in, we have uh, your worship, uh, our mayor, Steve Ogden. We have our CAO online as well as our finance director. Just... Um... If I could, uh, I guess I was uh, frozen or something when I first started. Uh, is that correct? Uh, just at the uh, end, there, Steve. Just at the end? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to say that uh, on this International Women's Day, it gives me great pride to uh, be able to uh, point to our chair of finance and uh, and with such such a competent leader and, and a fine mo role model for, for all young girls and women everywhere. So... I just want to thank you, uh, Councillor Gail McDonald, for all your work, everything that you've done, uh, both on this budget and throughout the year in 
uh, being the conscience of uh, the Stratford Town Council and really uh, providing great leadership and, uh, and great expertise. And uh, we're just really, really lucky to have you. So I just, I just wanted to say that to uh, on this International Women's Day, because I think it is uh, just, you're, you're just a, a, a great credit to, uh, to your gender. You're, you certainly are uh, a great leader. And I'm really uh, personally and professionally uh, really glad uh, to have you as, uh, as a colleague, as a friend, and, uh, and as on a council with us. So thank you. Well, I very much appreciate those kind words, Your Worship. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, recognize on this International Women's Day, uh, my co-chair of finance, uh, Councillor Jill Burridge, and my director of finance, Kim O'Connell, and um, the uh, communications manager, um, Wendy, who have been uh, unbelievably um, uh, important and supportive of me as we uh, presented this budget tonight. Yes, and I'd also like to echo that because I think it's uh, it's a credit to to everyone to have uh, uh, the financial leadership of our town uh, uh, really um, done uh, in most in in pretty well all respects by uh, by women. And uh, I know that uh, CAO Crosby uh, also had a role, and uh, <laughs> I, other councillors had a role, but. Uh, I really think that the women uh, really carried the ball on this and they've really done a fine job and they're all great role models. And uh, I really, uh, really proud to, uh, to have them all as colleagues and friends. So, so thank you all. Thanks again. Um, Phil, I see that you're unmuted. Do you have a question? You are paying close attention. I guess that's why you're the, uh, what were you described as the conscience of the town, something like that? <laughs> Mantle, but. I nicknamed Jiminy Cricket on that note. But anyhow, a couple of questions occurred to me while I was listening to your very thoughtful and detailed breakdown. Much appreciated. Well, well covered off. You uh, did talk about some of the uh, acknowledgements of IT risk and, and those kind of things. And it got me thinking, I haven't heard any more about the concept of, because again, you touched on the idea that uh, elections are coming up soon. Did anything further happen with regards to the uh, theoretical idea of encouraging some sort of online voting concept for municipalities. Yes, uh, Phil, thank you for bringing that up. Um, apparently that had to have the, uh, the full support of all municipalities on the island um, and it did not get to the full support to my understanding. So uh, that's been put on the back burner for this coming election. Okay, cool, thank you very much. I was just, I was just curious for what it's worth. I prefer it to be in that category because I think I alluded to that earlier that uh, records have shown that even when communities did go online, the demographics that chose to value voting didn't change right. and get more people. And in light of the uh, rapidly increasing acknowledgement of cyber concerns, um, that becomes a, an additional question of why you'd bother going from the current process that works. Mm -hmm. so I just was curious to confirm where that went. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so, if there's any other questions, feel free to, oh, go ahead, Phil. Yeah, I don't want to hog up the meeting, but since it seems like nobody else is asking questions, something occurred to me, you'd mentioned that you're replacing a stretch of sidewalk on Kepic Road. Has any thought been given to doing like the asphalt material that's being done on the trails area or the community walking area as opposed to the actual traditional sidewalk because sidewalks are, to my surprise, some of the last year I discovered they are, um, what was the word? Outrageously expensive. Mm -hmm. I think $400,000 for like a, a, maybe a mile or something. It was really surprising. I noticed that runners don't like sidewalks. So if we maybe gradually transition from sidewalks, which I, I presume the reason they don't like them is because they're uneven. I don't know. I just, I'm always amused to find runners out in the middle of the road. And it's mm -hmm. an opportunity to, to look at questioning with sidewalks being replaced, do you replace the section with the asphalt trail? Is that maybe a more cost-effective alternative? Right. Uh, and yes, that definitely was discussed. Um, I'm wondering if CAO Crosby would mind jumping in on that to uh, get the latest. Hi, Phil. Uh, gr a great question. Um, when we're when we're replacing a small section of sidewalk where where the existing width is uh, the regular 1.5 meters of concrete sidewalk, 
we normally go with a, a similar style in that area, but we have been moving towards uh, the uh, wider asphalt uh, trail. Uh, if you look at the Keppoch Road, uh, the section we did from uh, the Kinlock intersection all the way down to uh, T Hill uh, Beach, it's it's all uh, it's all the um, multi-use path, asphalt. extra width the asphalt. We are transitioning towards that, and the province is doing the same. So. It gives a, a wider width that allows for pedestrians and cyclists to use that section. So we definitely are transitioning, but in sections that we are doing a replacement, it, it's still, uh, we still have to go with the uh, concrete sidewalk in certain areas. Okay, that makes sense. I just was curious if thought had been given to that because like I say, I, I forget what surface that made me discover how ex outrageously expensive the uh, traditional sidewalks were. And I thought, holy Hannah. Thank you for Certainly, that. we're looking at transitioning, but uh, the, you know the the longevity is not as long on an asphalt sidewalk as it is on concrete. But uh, there's a little more maintenance associated with it. But they they definitely are uh, you know the capital side considerably cheaper uh, or inex more inexpensive than a concrete sidewalk section. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll just uh, perhaps check with Wendy there to see if uh, anything had come in on the chat uh, area there, Wendy. Nothing on the chat for questions. So if anyone else has a question that's on the call that would like to ask, they go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wendy. And uh, 